this poem that happened because I have this is my first poem that I ever wrote for performance. Um, I, I've been writing since I was 11, but when I ran into Ronnie from Ronnie Baxter Poetry, um, she saw me in the bus. She said, "Why don't you come to this poetry reading?" I came to poetry. They were dope, and I wrote this poem for the next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> I leisurely strolled through the park in the south, passing many objects, benches, and things. I passed monuments standing proud and erect. I saw statues of Confederate war heroes aiming rifles at the buildings across the street. I saw the Georgia state flag, and, and, and from where I stood, it looked like a Confederate flag, but that couldn't be, could it? I continued my pace over the surface of grass, and suddenly I passed this tree. It looked like it had been there for centuries, through blood that dripped like rain, through tears that fell upon the grass like dew. Just like my great-great-grandmother's, the skin was wrinkled, forming mountains and valleys on all sides. Each wrinkle probably could tell its own story. I screamed, what's up, Mr. Tree? Jokingly. Then I looked around to see if anybody noticed me. Oh, you must be the quiet type, I laughed. All along realizing I must have looked pretty stupid talking to this tall thing. Tell me something, Mr. Tree. If you could walk, would you have walked away? Would you have walked away from all those innocent black men that would be hung from one of your branches? Mr. Tree, if you could, if you could talk, no better yet scream, would you have yelled out against the Klansman who used your wood to make crosses to burn, or who used your shade to rape the black maid who worked for the family down the street? Mr. Tree, if you had a fist, would you have held it high to the sky? Mr. Tree, if you had eyes, if you had eyes, would you have shed a tear for the blacks who lost their life for just being black? Would you, Mr. Tree? Wait a minute. Are you a black tree or a white tree? <laughs> I sat by Mr. Tree for three or four hours asking all the questions, but he never answered. I asked him why they call it the Deep South. They don't call it the Shallow West or the High East. <laughs> maybe maybe because their hatred was so deep, it was more than skin deep. It was in their hearts and in their stomachs and even in their minds. They hated to see black and white together, even though their TV set was still not in color. Mr. Tree and I got so close that towards the end of our conversation, I was just calling him Tree. <laughs> and after me, Ramble knowing about the problems that plagued our society, we said our goodbyes. Or at least I said mine. I started to walk away, and when I was about five feet away, I heard, I tried to walk away. I turned around, but nobody was there. It was just me and Tree. So I again turned to leave. I did scream out. I turned around again, but nobody was there. It was just it was just me and Tree. We shall overcome. I ran and gave Tree a big hug. You know, it suddenly didn't matter to me if he was a black tree, a white tree, a yellow tree. He was on my side. And that's how it counts. Thank you.